welcome. The USC Living History Project is an important legacy that the USC Emeriti Center offers USC. We are here to capture the personal histories and wide variety of faculty and staff to enrich this USC legacy. The Emeriti Center has recorded over 60 recordings that are available in the Emeriti Center, the University Archives, and the Davis School of Gerontology Library. Many are on the USC YouTube. I'm Thelma Orr, and I'm a retired president of the Town and Gown organization here on campus. And our group gives uh, many scholarships to deserving students uh, throughout the year. So I'm very proud to have been the past president. And now I would like to introduce another past president of Town and Gown, Roberta Weaver. Welcome, Roberta. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Thelma. Okay. Let's begin. Uh, we would like to say when you were born and, uh, you know, do some early childhood history, but your later years are so much more impressive, but those earlier years are fun. But this coming August, you're going to celebrate a very important birthday, and you're going to be 99 years young. That's right. So we will come back to the childhood later. Let's right. start with when you were in high school, oh, okay. where you were living at the time, and let's just progress from there. So high school. When I was in high school, my father was in Yosemite as park naturalist, oh. and um, so that was my legal residence. Yes. But in high school, uh, I would have had to be bused to Mariposa which my father oh. did not approve yes. of that kind of thing at all. So I stayed with a friend in the Bay Area mm -hmm. and continued at the University High School, okay. which was the University of California's practice teaching school oh, I see. for training of teachers. Yes. These practice teaching schools were a very important part of education, yes. I think. Yes. And I had a wonderful education in high school. Okay, there. what were some of your hobbies in high school? What did you like to do? Oh, <laughs> other than hike. <laughs> uh, okay, did you go to Yosemite in we the were summers? At Yosemite uh, often. Actually, my, it was my stepmother who was, uh, I was with at that time, uh -huh. uh, after the first year. She'd gone up to Yosemite yes. when my father went up there, but missed being in the teaching profession, found life in Yosemite in the wintertime a little dull. Yes. So she came back and was a practice, was a supervising teacher at I University see. High School. I so, see. But the, uh, she and my brother and I mm -hmm. went up to Yosemite weekends and certainly all summer. And all I imagine summer. you enjoyed hiking all those wonderful trails Absolutely. in Yosemite. Absolutely. Right. Uh, Yosemite was a wonderful place in which to grow up. Yes. My father had been a, a summertime naturalist there yes. before he was full-time. I see. So we spent many summers there before yes. we actually lived there. Then share with us uh, what you th were thinking about college, where you wanted to go and oh, what did you want to study? There was never any question. Uh, I was only a, a few blocks from the University of California. Naturally, well, Berkeley, I would be going there. Yes. My brother and I played on that campus as young ones. I and, see. Uh, so knew the campus very well. In those days, there mm -hmm. was no problem about, about admission. Oh. I just went down the, the street and said, Walk here in. I am. There you are. And being a native Californian, you could just do that. Well, I suppose anyone yes. could in those well, days. Maybe so. It was, oh, the, the student population was 12,000 people. And, you know? and what was the tuition like then? $19 a semester. Oh my, I've never, <laughs> never heard about isn't it being that inexpensive. Isn't life interesting? Right. So I went on from high school into, into Berkeley. Co into okay. Berkeley. And what yeah. was your major there? My, my major was public speaking. Of That's course, what I mean, you, yes. you do so much speaking now. Uh, my, my interest had always been storytelling. Okay. And I had been storytelling in the library at yes. Berkeley uh, as I was growing up. Very and interesting. Very yes. interesting. Then, of course, I believe you needed to uh, go on to graduate school. So oh, yes. what was the next step <laughs> then for you? Well, of course, I was going to, of course, 
come back and be a high school teacher. Yes, of course. But in order to get a really good high school, yes. it seemed yes. as though a master's degree was going to be better. And so I, my professors at Berkeley recommended Wisconsin. Wisconsin, why? They had graduated there. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I think. But they said Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. I see. One of those. And you know the way young people are. I thought, I will just write to those three. And uh, the first one that responded, That's I'll go there. Go. Oh, my goodness. What a chance you were taking knowing what <laughs> happens next. So well, off my, to Wisconsin. I went to Wisconsin. And? The chair of the department never let a letter sit on his desk overnight. And so, so he, I went to Wisconsin. I see. And the interesting thing was, he became my father-in-law. Oh my uh, goodness, later, oh later. my goodness. So now we have to find out how did you meet that wonderful person in your life? <laughs> Since he, this well, man was going to be your father-in-law, there must have been the son someplace in this scene. Absolutely. Well, his father had his son's picture. Oh, hey. And on his desk, and so when I saw him, I introduced myself and to him. And where were you? <laughs> oh, I picked him up in a hotel lobby. No, you didn't. I didn't. I thought it was the library. <laughs> no. Oh, Roberta. I was, uh, I'm shocked to say yes. I did that. I introduced myself in a hotel lobby and gave him greetings from yes. my, his friends back in Berkeley. Berkeley. Okay. <laughs> and soon. Uh, One thing up. led to another. I had to help him with his PhD yes, research. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my, all those. Because what was he studying then? He, he was uh, studying geography. I see. And he had finished all his classwork. He was working on research. Okay. He was very interested in distribution patterns. Okay, I think of that's what? A big distribution part of, of geography. Of the soil or distribution of uh, what? Uh, he was interested in, at first, in, in people, the distribution oh, okay. of why they would uh, uh, settle in Certain one area areas. or another. Yes. Or why crops were grown oh, in one area okay. or another. Actually, he, his PhD thesis was on the distribution of barley. Of barley. Barley, because oh. Wisconsin is a big beer state. Uh, oh, well, of course. And they had lots of barley <laughs> and hops grown okay, in okay. Wisconsin. And this was also in the middle of the corn belt. Okay. Now, how do you get barley in the middle of a corn belt? So and so um, that was his interest. That, I see, I that's see. That's what his, his research was okay. all about. So then, when were you married? We were married in 1940. When you graduated with your master's degree? Well, I had graduated the year before, oh, okay. in 39. Okay. That, was, that only took a year. But I found a nice job working in uh, a theater. At in the U theater? And at uh, the University Theater okay. at Wisconsin. Doing and what? Oh, mostly selling tickets at the okay. box office. Okay. And Popcorn? All. Uh, all that. No, <laughs> not performing. Oh, not pop. Okay. okay. <laughs> not, not popcorn. Okay. No. But, uh, and John finished all his research. I and see. And then we were married. Okay. So now we're married and we're moving on. And where did you we move to moved next? We to New York, New York City. City. <laughs> okay. Big time. The Big Apple. Uh, John was uh, the uh, associate editor of the uh, Geographic Review, okay. which is the American Geographical okay. Society's okay. scholarly research yes, yes. organization. And uh, uh, so he found a nice apartment okay. far north on okay. Manhattan Island okay. because the Ge American Geographical Society is at 156th and Broadway. Okay. So John didn't really have to go into downtown. Oh, I see. Okay. And it was very okay. nice. Now, were you storytelling? I mean, I don't think you could tell many stories out of that magazine, <laughs> but... Uh. Well, uh, oddly, I was downtown, okay. uh, for some reason, at uh, a very interesting think, uh, thing, I think. Uh, I was on the Times Square subway platform, oh. and along came this woman who had been the, uh, the visiting professor at 
Berkeley, who oh. had allowed me to audit her class in storytelling. Oh my, how and interesting! And I met her on the on the live on the platform of the subway, and she said, "Roberta, what are you doing here?" And I said, "We've just moved." And she said, "We need you in the library," Very because good. she had just been appointed director of children's <laughs> work. In my goodness. New York Public Library. What and a coincidence. Point, well, isn't it a strange Because even thing? then, uh, yes. I mean, with, you know, the transportation oh, was so different then. But there were so many people yes. around and yes. to meet her and to have her remember me. I, yes. I was very um, honored. Very and good. so then I began telling stories I for the New see. York Public Library. How wonderful. How wonderful. Because they do that. There were three of us uh, full time storytellers mm -hmm. doing. Um, libraries and playgrounds and after school and all okay. those kinds of things. Wonderful. Hospitals. Okay. So now in the world, things were beginning to oh, happen. Yes, so yes. let's kind of move on. Was John drafted or was he? He would have been. Um, uh, he was doing work for the State Department with okay. those mar marvelous maps at the oh, American oh, okay. Geographical Society. Oh, okay. The maps, Society. okay. And um, um, when it was time for him to be drafted, the Navy made him a, a second lieutenant, oh, okay. a, a second junior lieutenant. lieutenant, I guess okay. they called it in the Navy. And uh, we moved to Washington, D.C. Washington, so he could continue his work with the maps. I see. And he, re he created uh, a map of the ice in the, the world. Okay. Where harbors, when harbors, Froze, froze and, uh -huh. and how thick the ice was, and which plane could land. Oh my! All that kind of Very thing. Very interesting. And the, there was an ice atlas created from his research that was on every ship at sea. Oh, okay. And, so that and then great. submarines. Uh, were submarines being very too. important for submarines. Yes. So, so now was, let's move on. Where was the next stop after Washington? The next stop was the, at, as the war was closing. Yes. In 1946, and of all these students coming back, right. all these all soldiers the GIs, coming back yes. to GI education, right, right, universities went wild, yes. and of course, there was a wonderful opportunity to become a professor. Yes, and John chose from the several that he was offered. He chose to go to the University of Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay, yes. I was a little startled by that. Because? Well, I thought that surely we were coming back to, to California. California. Oh, no, <laughs> but, I don't think but so. But no, we were at Minnesota, and it was a very brilliant decision mm -hmm. academically. He started as a, an assistant professor yes. one year, associate professor the next year. Oh, my year, goodness, that's fast. Full professor the next fast year. Fast up the ranks. Three years of yes. full professor. Yes, yes. It was a wonderful time. Good, to be in good, education. Good. Okay, so he loved it. So Minnesota, then? Uh, then, in, after 10 years of this, um, he had decided to be into the academic administration yes. business. And uh, his first job was at Kansas State. Kansas State, my goodness. In Manhattan, okay. Manhattan, Kansas. Uh, okay. And uh, he became Dean of Arts and Science. See, okay, now he's the Dean. Okay, we're moving up the ranks here. All right. Okay, then. Then he went to Nebraska two okay, years later. Nebraska. As graduate Dean. Okay, graduate Dean. Because Nebraska was a part of the AAU, American the Association of Universities. Universities, yes. And research, uh -huh, more uh -huh, research uh -huh. organization. He thought that was important. Yes. Now? Now, then. Four years later, he went to as vice president at Iowa, of the University. So now of we're Iowa. a vice president. We're just going fast. Okay. Then, yeah. then he was executive vice president at Ohio State. Ohio State Buckeyes. Buckeyes. Oh my! With, They're one of our big rivals. <laughs> yeah. Okay. With, uh, with uh, Woody Hayes. And oh all. my! Oh yes, so yes. We were there two years. Two years. Okay. And then. John was asked to be president of the University of Missouri system. Oh, the okay, the Missourian. Uh, and this was, this was um, uh, Columbia, Missouri. Columbia, Missouri. They have a wonderful the journalism home, school. Home office. Yes. But the state was just beginning 
to have a campus at Kansas City yes. and one in St. Louis. Okay. There had always been a school of mines in Rolla. So he be became the president of the university system. And, and we, then? We moved to Columbia. We were there four or five years. Yes. And then he was asked to return to Wisconsin. So back to Chris. Wisconsin, you just couldn't stay away from there. <laughs> Absolutely. So in what capacity now? He was president. President of Wisconsin. Of Wisconsin. And on that very day that he was to start, the governor was inaugurated, who said in his budget address, we are going to put all of public higher education yes. in one pot. Oh my. And John Weaver can run it. Oh my. This was not what he had contracted to do, but it passed by one vote in the Senate. And so all the state teachers' colleges and uh, community colleges. Yes. yes all oh. became a oh part my. of the University of And Wisconsin now you're a first system. lady. Oh, yes. I'd been that since at, we were at, yeah, at Colum Missouri. At Columbia, yes, Missouri. Yes, okay. So well, now, was what was it like to be a first lady? What kind it, of <laughs> obligations and duties and donors did you have to <laughs> take care of? I think the biggest duty of any president is to take care of the governing board. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the regents. Uh, yes. Or in this in that case, they were regents, both yes. campuses. Curators, they were in Missouri, that, okay. and regents in Wisconsin. Uh -huh. You take care of them, and then things are moved okay. smoothly. So what did that mean, to take care of them? <laughs> Dinners? Uh, Dinners. See to it that all their <laughs> needs were needs met. Are met. <laughs> and it, of course, in Wisconsin, it was constant travel. Oh, uh, I see. From one all through the state. Oh, through the state, yes, yeah, to the different campuses. And, and of course, there's a chancellor in each campus. The president is, uh, is not local mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there. And so sometimes the chancellor and the chancellor's wife were not too happy to have the president's wife oh, come in on their trip. Oh, too. okay. Uh, this is a but you were such thing. a charming lady. I'm sure once they got to know you after the first couple of years, it was <laughs> like, Oh, we're so pleased Roberta's coming. <laughs> oh, it was difficult. It was oh, very troubling. Sounds like a very stressful you know, job for both was, of you. It was the time of the student troubles. Oh, and yes. And so it was very difficult it, on that. Right, grounds. right. And right. so it, just to keep things happy at home was yes. a big job. But John had a heart attack and uh, third. Um, uh, Let's see, six Can't bypasses. Six, six bypasses. And this was back in the early yeah, days. Early days. That they'd only done yes. this at the Cleveland. In the Clinic. 70s. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And this, it was the 60s. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Now, no, it was the 70s. Yeah. So then, the by this time, you've had a family. Oh, our, our, Where were our those two boys. Two boys. Um, had grown, and, and one had long gone on to. Oh, okay. Uh, Texas, and uh -huh. he's with you know, in computer work. But my other son is in finance and okay. uh, has moved back to Columbia, Missouri, as a oh matter of fact. Oh, my, that's interesting. It's, uh, it, it's where he graduated, yes. and uh, it's a wonderful college town. Yes, yes. Football, yes. basketball, Yes, also, baseball. like I said earlier, he very wonderful he school of that. journalism. So there, that's where mm -hmm, they are mm -hmm. now. But, but in those days, the troubled times made yes. it very stressful. Because it was the, uh, the Vietnam War and Vietnam, all of the protests. The student protests. Yes, and, and civil rights. So John decided to take early retirement. Yes, he was 62. yes, yes. He took early retirement. And then? Jack Hubbard was Remember a Jack Hubbard, friend. yes, our president. President at yes. USC, and we had known him when he was um, at Sophie Newcomb in uh, Louisiana. I know, see. Because he was also he, teaching geography, or th was no, it that? No, it was a history. Oh, history. Oh, that's right. right. Okay, he history. history. But we had known him through through academic yes, circles. Yes. Yes. And he and his wife Lucy have yes. remained had remained friends. So Jack Hubbard said, "Why don't you come to USC and teach a year?" Yeah, one year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 
and, and so we decided to do that. Mm -hmm. By Christmas that year, they had asked him to do some more. Okay, and now this is what year? 1977. 77, okay. And so um, Mr. Annenberg created the Center for the Study of the American Experience. Okay, yes. And John and Cy Ramo of the TRW yes. and um, the R from Ray TRW were co-directors of this center. Okay. And they did a wonderful job with bringing conferences mm -hmm. to, to this campus. campus, I guess. And then Ms. when Mr. Annenberg moved back into communication yes. from that, um, John went back to teaching geography. I see. And this was uh, very pleasant yes, moving yes. for him. And he taught 10 more years and from the time we arrived here and uh, retired again. Retired again. Now, when you f first came back to Los Angeles, um, I believe you had some help in finding a place to live because th this oh. day and age, it's very difficult uh, yes. for a person. Uh, and it was Jack Hubbard who made Jack it possible Hubbard. Okay. for us. Okay. Uh, uh, Paul Knoll, who is Paul in the history Knoll. department okay. with Jack Hubbard, um, was going on sabbatical. Yes. And so Jack suggested that we contact Paul, and we did, and he was willing to lend a, a, rent us his house. Oh, how nice. That first year. Yes. And uh, th that was very nice. They yes. were, he lives yes. in Culver City, which is very convenient to yes. USC. Yes, yes. But when we decided to stay. I was going to say, this one year has gone uh, by, and so yes. now we're into year two or so. Uh, with yes, and since he was teaching geography and yes. enjoying it, yes. we decided to stay. And so we, uh, he had always been interested in trade routes. And oh, trade routes. Trade okay. routes and trade centers. Okay. So naturally, the harbor is yeah. the oh, yes. place Very that active. he wanted to yes. be close to. Yes. And we found a wonderful house that looks out over the harbor. Yes. And also downtown Los yes. Angeles. And so it there was a you beautiful were. Yes. view both yes. ways. Okay. And bought a house, mm -hmm. and I continue to live and there. And you continue I've been to there live there, yes. <laughs> ever since. With your dog? Or we had dogs. Yes. We had a pair of collie dogs. Yes, I remember. We walked every morning down uh -huh, by uh -huh, the harbor. Okay. Checking out all okay. those. Now shoes. you you got involved also in the university, oh, absolutely. and I think in your community. So let's hear what Roberta Weaver did, <laughs> and still uh, does. Yeah, it still does. Well, I was, uh, as you have already indicated, yes. town and gun was a big part yes. of, of uh, the life of uh, at the university. The uh, uh, Lucy Hubbard had said yes. immediately, now Roberta, you must join Town and Gown. Yes. Well, you know they do a great thing for the university. Yes. Oh yes, so I joined. And this was true. It yes. was wonderful. I then went on through various chairman right. chairs and right. finally became president. Yes. Um, I was very interested in the hospital. Yes. Uh, the university hospital and uh, the uh, Hospital Guild was a, uh, a very important yes. part of my work with them. Yes. One of the most interesting things, and this was another thing that Lucy had done, was um, the university was teaching English as a second language for the wives of graduate students. I see. From, uh, from other abroad, countries. Uh -huh. from abroad. Uh -huh. And because of Lucy, we had a wonderful uh, lobby area in the married student housing or oh, the okay. international oh, student oh, yes, housing yes. on McClintic. And uh, the, uh, so I taught English for two mornings a week. Oh, how and nice, how we, uh, nice. Not only ha taught them English, but we taught them how American customs and cooking and, and let them sew. One of the the president of the Broadway stores, yes. the, his wife was very interested in oh, this program. Oh, okay, that's interesting, and yes. She was, and she loved to t cook, and so she helped them cook. Oh, how nice. And, and Mr. Lyons arranged for us to have sewing machines. 
Very good. And very good. My job was to keep the sewing machines intact because they never knew how to thread a needle. <laughs> So somewhere along the way, you had learned to sew. Oh, yes, somewhere. Uh, not very well, oh. but I knew how to keep a sewing machine okay, running. Okay, okay. So that was a big part of what yes. we did. And Mr. Lyons also found us material for them, but mostly those girls from other countries knew how to sew yes. much better than oh, I did. Oh, I see. Uh, they're still doing that class. Really? Uh, uh, Who's teaching it? Well, now it's professionally done. I see. Uh, the, the, and it has extended from the wives of graduate yes, students yes. to, I think, men as well. Men, men as well. I think <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. Yes. 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 Is that so, house still there? Do you know if? I well, don't think uh, so. Well, they moved. Uh, I think the class now is in the 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 church there on. Uh, oh, the university church. The, the university I see. church. Okay. Yes, okay. In the basement. Now, I'm sure you got involved in your community where you were living. Oh, so what, I what did. Have, and you're still doing that, I believe. Uh, well, I was, uh, I've was. i been quite involved with the Salvation Army. Salvation I was Army. On the advisory board for the Salvation Army. Okay. Uh, and I was, I've uh, been homeowner's president for over 20 years. Homeowner's president. <laughs> oh, that's really having to deal with people. Uh, that is hard. But uh, we have a wonderful group of. Uh, 192 houses. And That's a big job, keep, keep, yes. Keep going. But I also know that uh, you sing in a choir and you've acted. Yes. In we Christmas have. pageants. Uh, and yes, we, I've, I've been fortunate in being a part of Neighborhood Church. Neighborhood which, Church in which Palsbury. Is a, a congregational based church okay. on, the, uh, on the ocean. Yes. And it's a beautiful church, and I've loved being a part of that. Yes. I've gone through various. Listen, now you were in a Christmas play, I believe, this past winter, and I can't remember <laughs> your. Oh well, uh, we've done various musicals, yes. but this last one was Nunsets, the one of the uh, of the nuns at the who <laughs> have to. Oh, it's so, so silly. <laughs> well, I remember when you were telling me about it, but I can't remember the details, so. <laughs> it was silly, but they they had to, uh, uh, the, the, some of the nuns had, had been poisoned by the soup. Oh, and my so goodness. And so they had to raise money to, Take to care of uh, bury the nuns. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> It's a silly play, but it was Silly play, but I'm people. sure the they, congregation enjoyed they made, it. Uh, they made little, little cards uh -huh. from baby pictures that I had. Oh, I see. Of me that uh, they sold as a matter of raising money to yes. bury the nuns. I see. So you well, see, it was so silly. Well, that's, <laughs> but it was still fun. It's still yes. fun. Uh, but I've, I've been the, the, um, what are you, <laughs> uh, at LA in Oklahoma, and I've been in uh, the Fiddler on the Roof, you I have. was the matchmaker. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> so, that's a good role for you. Yes, yes. Uh, so I've been active, yes, so yes, say, but yes. Uh, can you recall some of the wonderful people that have been an impact on your life, you know, at many different locations or even just here at USC? Oh, I've, I've, I've enjoyed working with the Emeriti Center. Yes, this she's, has been yes. fun. Uh, Bob Biller. Bob Biller, was, yes. Uh, instrumental in getting me on the board of the uh, retired faculty. Yes. Thinking that I could do something perhaps to improve the lot of widows. Yes. To be sure that they had the benefits that yes. accrued to them from yes. their husband's Very service. Very important. Um, and so this is what got me started on that. It has turned out that there's there really was not much that could be done. Right, right. Um, to and there's still much involved. more work to be done yes, in that it's, regard. It's very, uh, widows are not necessarily eager to come down to the campus. I'm sure, yes, for that. yes. So we, other than the regional social things that yes. the Emeriti Center does. Uh -huh. uh, I believe We've at some point your husband John was president of the RFA. That is true. Yes. You know the RFA and the women's faculty yes. group uh, were really clubs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the, uh, they met at 
what used to be the faculty center. Yes. And uh, they'd meet once a month, have yes. a program, yes. have lunch, yes. and just, that was it. Yes. Just got acquainted yes. with other, each other. Yes. I think it's so much more important to have a more formalized way yes. of the retired faculty is organized now. Yes. Well, I, I think, think too. Was, he really enjoyed working. Yes, with that. that. Well, you're you still are. I'm sure they're got uh, jobs waiting for you in the <laughs> wings. So, uh, yeah, I think yeah. too. You know, you've been through so many different decades of inventions and happenings, and uh, I, you know, just in my own life in terms of uh, the air airplane industry, oh. et cetera. But. Uh, what are yes. some of your feelings about living and seeing all of the different happenings? I mean, there's been a couple wars or more, <laughs> and... Uh, well, as you know, um, I was... Um, my mother uh, died when I was young, and so my brother and I lived with my grandparents yes. on a farm yes. outside of Fresno. Yes. And this was a very primitive farm, mm -hmm. so... In, I was four years old, and from four to it was eight, um, I lived a farm, yes. rural life. And uh, in that time, as I think back on it, you know, there was no water in the house, there was no electricity, there was, um, um, well, we just uh, well, you had the horses, horses instead of tractors, ho and, and yes, buggy or or wagon, yes, and uh, so think of of that in my lifetime, mm -hmm. from that kind of right. early life to now where right. I've been able to travel the world. Exactly. Well, after John retired from Wisconsin, no, from here. Mm -hmm. You traveled a lot. We have traveled yes, a lot. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I think I have been a very fortunate person yes. in that. Well, and also I'm very familiar with his photography, and I wondered how much help and what you learned about the photography world. Uh, I learned to keep records. Keep records. Well, I'm sure you were very good at that. Uh, he uh, was very specific. He wanted to know exactly where the picture was taken. Yes. And he went at it 3.2 uh, miles from this place. I see. Uh, okay. 4.9 yes. or something specific. Yes. You know, nothing just casual. So, so I kept records. So the records were like how far away he was from the object that he was taking? Uh, from, or? No, from the cities. Oh, from the cities. From I the see. Cities. Okay. So, Okay. You'd know where we were. Yes. Yeah. I have a brother-in-law that is a photographer and historian also, and it's like whenever they took a trip, he had to stop at every historical marker, ah, you yes. know, because he wanted to see what it was. <laughs> so so let's uh, go back a little in time, Roberta, to uh, your days as town and gown president and mm -hmm. uh, what was happening in the organization. So let's talk about town and gown. Uh, town and gown is, has a wonderful history. They uh, have given scholarships to yes. brilliant students. Yes. Your own grandson was a... Uh, yeah, two grandsons. Two grandsons yes. have had one people. That meant you had to be off the board. That couldn't be on the board, uh, right. When, when that was going on, right. but they do a wonderful job in scholarship aid. I've been, uh, I've been um, a scholarship chairman myself. I've also done the programs for Town and Gown. Yes. I found a number of very interesting professors to speak, yes. but the ladies were not too happy sometimes that they were a little too erudite I see. for the programs. I see. But uh, I, I enjoyed them. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, the uh, I I was very involved in in doing the benefits, yes. the scholarship benefits. Uh, every spring we have yes. uh, one of these benefits that raises money for campus beautification and also for scholarships. Yes. Um, I went one year, uh, Ann Douglas was our Ann honoree. Ann Douglas, Kirk um, Douglas is and wife. Kirk, uh, Kirk and Ann Douglas came together and they had this wonderful program of building playgrounds uh, oh, for schools. Right. Yes, yes. And Kirk Douglas was a marvelous, is a marvelous man, but he, 
particularly loved when they built a new playground yes, yes. and he could ride the the sled. Oh, well, really? <laughs> Not the, the slide. The, the slide, yes. <laughs> there were many pictures of him sliding down. Well, as I recall, <laughs> though, this was after he'd had a stroke. Yes, yes. that's true. So he, yes, this yes. is Kurt uh -huh, uh -huh. Um Then uh, uh, n another year I was able to have Huell Hauser oh, as yes. our honoree. honoree. Yes. When we have an honoree, this helps bring a, a bigger crowd yes. to the uh, the the event, which yes. is always in some hotel. Yes. So this is that was those are the two that I have worked yes. on particularly. Right. But there's also fashion shows at these oh. events, and I think the women love the fashion shows just Absolutely. as much. Absolutely. <laughs> and yes. when they have uh, some of the students yes. the, uh, as models, yes. they like that particularly. Very much so. And there have been some wonderful young scholars, yes. little men who are very fond yes. of prancing up and down that runway. Right. <laughs> as I recall, they model some of the um, outfits that could be purchased at the bookstore. Oh, that's true. Right, the and then they, the fashion show always yeah. ends with the women strutting yeah. down the yeah. runway and then the guys in their tuxedos yeah. <laughs> right. and the women just love to see those young, handsome uh, absolutely. men. Absolutely. Well, uh, Town and Gun is 110 years old yes. now and uh, they're having a, a benefit uh, next week, as yes. a matter of fact, uh, that will be honoring Town right. and Gun. Right. We're going to honor ourselves. We honor yes. ourselves. Yes, for exactly. That. Uh, now, so also, you were president of the uh, hospital guild, or you were program chair. I was program for chair for many years. Yes, uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to introduce the wonderful doctors of USC yes. to the friends of the university, yes. and uh, mostly women yes. who came out to USC. Right. So every so often, we would have. Uh, one of the programs at uh, at a, a country, country club, club yes. for instance. The, uh, but uh, mostly they were at the hospital. hospital yes, yes. And uh, it, it's a marvelous hospital. Right. Uh, you know, it's. I know the women love to come to the uh, programs when they were held at the country clubs because yes. uh, yes. they usually didn't get to come to the country clubs. So <laughs> right. that was always nice. That's true. But I remember one particular program where you had asked one of the eye, prominent eye surgeons to come and speak, as <laughs> I recall. Yes. And you were going to introduce him. So the time came and he didn't show up and didn't. So phone <laughs> oh, calls were being it. made and found out he was in surgery. And yes. Yes. was going to be delayed and then it just so happened you found out that oh well the, wait wait I need to back up a little bit because uh, you f you found out that he wasn't going to come and while other people were scurrying to find someone to come you gave the whole history of this surgeon <laughs> and you you told all about the eye and what the surgery was going to do and, and all that and by the time the substitute came in the lecture was almost <laughs> over, and we thought, well, there's Roberta, good old <laughs> Roberta. She's uh, saved us again with the program. <laughs> it was, it is marvelous to think that they can move the, the, the veins, yes. the, uh, the arteries in the, behind the eye, yes. so that it restores sight. Yes. It, uh, they do well, a wonderful amazing. job. Yes, they really do. Oh, it's right, marvelous. Right, right. Well, let's talk about some other events uh, that happened, like when, um, well, when you were at Wisconsin and while well, the war was going on, and then um, after that, and you came out here, I think we got into a lot of the nuclear testing. Maybe that was even going on, and we had the, the war, you know, not the war, but the war, um, the development of the nuclear warheads and all between Russia and the United States and then our space. Mm -hmm. Here I'm giving away what uh, you already know, but uh, uh, no. can you recall some of those events? No. You I really you, had nothing to do with those. You just <laughs> they were beyond You were me. busy doing all of these yes. these other I, things. I re but uh, I do, do know you know Wisconsin, the University of Wisconsin is one of those places like Berkeley that if there is something to protest, they oh, will protest. protest yes. There were pictures in the paper just yesterday of the students uh, in the rotunda of the Capitol protesting anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, we had arrived at Wisconsin just after they had blown up a, 
uh, building, oh. and this was a, a protest against mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they thought they were doing it at three o'clock in the morning, so no one would be oh. hurt. But unfortunately, a graduate student was working on his mm -hmm. research, and he was killed. This mm. was a very traumatic thing, and people couldn't understand why we would go to Wisconsin oh. when it, it had such a reputation. But of course, it was home. Yes, and yes, John's yes. Parents were there, had been there. They were I both see. gone by then. But uh, it was uh, it, it was a hotbed of trouble, yes, really. Yes, yes. And at one point. Uh, uh, John had to call the National Guard to be down mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. pathway from mm -hmm. the hill down to the campus, yes, uh, yes. down to the state. You know, the Capitol is there and mm -hmm. the university, yes, those yes. two things, and and that's plenty yes, of yes. trouble right there. So now, did you uh, remember the difference between the students on the Wisconsin campus and then when you came here to USC? Oh was, my, yes. What were some uh, of the differences? They're so mature here. Oh, of course, <laughs> yeah. yes. I think that's true. Uh, they uh, they have a, a, a more global outreach, I think. Here, here at USC, here at yes. USC. Well, we have so many foreign students yeah, also that enhance. Yes, and so this, uh, it was a, a, a welcome yes. thing. Yes. I believe the war troubles had not fomented here right, at right, Los Angeles right, as right. they had okay. Some at Missouri. I remember um, the student newspaper editor from the Kansas City campus, uh, I asked him what he was going to do after the war, and he, or after he graduated, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, he mm -hmm. said, well, I guess I'll be a rabbi. <laughs> at least as long as the war lasts. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that was real dedication, yeah, wasn't yes, it? Yes, oh, yes, that kind yes. of attitude right, was right. What, what was giving trouble yes. to education. Yes, well now I want to come back again to USC and the Retired Faculty Association because oh, yes. I know you've been very active in that. So oh. why don't you tell us about some of the opportunities that you've had working with the staff and with other oh, retired absolutely. faculty people? Uh, well, for 10 years, I ran one of the programs that the college uh, had okay. on the west side, introducing professors who came to speak out there. At, at, uh, uh, and this was a wonderful experience. Unfortunately, that whole project has fallen on uh, apart and is not being done anymore. But this was something I looked forward to every Thursday morning. Every week? Uh, every week. Oh my goodness. We had a, a wonderful uh, set of programs that uh, that were were done in the uh, West Side. I uh, see. So it was uh, like uh, a subject, uh, se semester long program or just a different program? A different each one week? each week. And you were responsible for getting the no, speakers? No, the US, USC, oh, USC Maritime Center. Uh, college. You were the administrator. Yeah, yes, I, I just introduced the this professor. One more time, introducing, introducing. And yes. Made sure the chairs were in the place oh, okay. and all that. Okay. Okay. The, um, the subsequent to yes, that, after yes. Bob Biller asked me to be a, a part of the board, I've enjoyed being a part of the program committee. Yes. Uh, we have a wonderful program called a sherry hour. Yes. Which is a That's a, not a person, informal. that's a drink. Yes. Okay. It, it, it's, could be water. Yeah. Could be sherry. <laughs> yes, it yes. Could be. And uh, the, uh, uh, it, it's an informal opportunity yes. for various retired people, yes. with friends, to come and hear a professor speak. Yes. And Jack Crosley has done a marvelous job in mm -hmm. Yes. bringing uh, very interesting yes. programs. Yes. The Sherry Hour has gotten larger as uh, in attendance. Yes. I've kept, I check the people in as yes. they come and uh, this has been fun and I've gotten acquainted with many. Yes. And uh, I keep records of who the comes and yes. uh, where we, uh -huh, uh -huh, so this uh -huh, has been fun. Uh -huh. 
Well, there must be other things. I know you enjoy the LA Philharmonic and I do. some other activities in the community. Yes, and because of one of the wonderful uh, emeritus emerita professors, uh, yes. uh, I have uh, gotten involved in the opera, yes. uh, the opera in HD from the Metropolitan. Yes. She has introduced me to that. She has also introduced me to the Film Society, and so uh, we see oh, all I kinds of interesting that. movies. Yes. And so uh, the, the opportunities for pleasure yes. are very strong in the Los Angeles area, yes. I find. Well, and I think, too, there's so many contacts with professors that have retired and staff members that uh, they have free time now, and you have free time, and I yes. think it's just wonderful what you've contributed yes. to uh, to the uh, whole f function of the center. Uh, I, I am attending, or have attended, a, a wonderful class that uh, Dr. Marsh has just given at the, at the uh, uh, Palos Verdes Library, oh, okay. uh, a series of six lectures. I see. And that's been fun okay. and gathered the community. Well, Roberta, it's been wonderful talking with you, I and we've been friends for a long time, so this has yes. added another chapter in Absolutely. our relationship. So yes. thank you so much for coming today. Uh, it's been a pleasure thank talking you. to thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you.